Propanoic acid is a weak acid. The acid dissociation constant, Ka, for propanoic acid is 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per decimeter cubed at 25 degrees C. State the meaning of the term weak acid. Well, the definition for acid, strong or weak, is a measure of how much that acid dissociates when it is in water. A strong acid fully or completely ionizes, whereas a weak acid partially or slightly ionizes or dissociates in water. In B, we are asked to give an expression for the acid dissociation constant for propanoic acid. We must always personalise our Ka expressions. There is a shorthand way of doing Ka expressions that is only for calculations. So propanoic acid has got this formula. When it dissociates, we make H plus and we make the C2H5COO minus ion. So the Ka expression has got the two product concentrations on the top. They are multiplied together, divided by the reactant concentration. And that's what those square brackets are representing, remember. Alternatively, you can have H3O plus in this expression instead of H plus, but it is simpler to just include the H plus concentration. And then in part C, we are told that a student dilutes 25 cm cubed of 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed propanoic acid by adding water until the total volume is 100 cm cubed. Calculate the pH of this diluted solution of propanoic acid. Give your answer to two decimal places. The first thing that we need to do is calculate the new diluted concentration of propanoic acid because it was 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed, but now it's going to be smaller than that because we've added water to it. And so we need to use the moles equals concentration times volume expression and the volume was 25 cm cubed, so that needs to be 0.025 multiplied by 0.5 and that gets us 0.0125 moles of propanoic acid at the beginning. When we add water to it, that acid is still going to be there, so the diluted moles is still going to be the same. But now it's spread over a bigger volume, 100 cm cubed, so 0.1 dm cubed, so concentration is moles divided by volume. This gets us a new diluted concentration of 0.125 moles per decimeter cubed. There's an alternative way to do this that is faster, but it might not have occurred to you to do it. The volume has been increased fourfold, so that means there's four times as much solution as there was, and that means the concentration will be four times smaller. So well done if you spotted that. You could simply have taken that 0.5 and divided it by four because the solution is four times as diluted, and you would obviously get the same answer both times. So now we've got the equipment to plug this into the Ka expression. So we've got Ka is equal to hydrogen ion concentration multiplied by propanoate concentration divided by propanoic acid concentration. So we know Ka and we know propanoic acid concentration. So it looks like we still have two unknowns and obviously we need to have only one unknown if we're going to find it. Now, what we need to remember here is that for pure weak acids, the concentration of hydrogen ions is going to be the same as the concentration of the salt that is produced once the propanoic acid donates those hydrogen ions. So in other words, H plus concentration is the same as the propanoate concentration. So when that is the case, we can replace those with just simply H plus squared. So Ka equals H plus squared divided by the propanoic acid concentration. You can plug the numbers in at this point and then rearrange it with the numbers, or you can rearrange it before putting the numbers in. And if we do that, we get H plus is equal to the square root of Ka multiplied by the propanoic acid concentration. When we plug the numbers into that, we get the hydrogen ion concentration as being 1.3 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per decimeter cubed. And last of all, pH is negative log of hydrogen ion concentration, so negative log of what we've just got for our answer, and that gives us a pH of 2.89 to two decimal points. You must always report pH values to two decimal places, and they have signposted it here that that's a requirement, but they don't always. 
A buffer solution with a pH of 4.50 is made by dissolving X grams of sodium propanoate, there is its formula, in a solution of propanoic acid. The final volume of buffer solution is 500 cm cubed, and the final concentration of propanoic acid is 0 0.2.50 moles per decimeter cubed. Calculate X in grams. In other words, calculate the mass in grams of sodium propanoate that needed to be added. And we've been reminded that the propanoic acid Ka value is 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per decimeter cubed. So for a buffer solution, we can't use the pure acid simplification that we used in the previous question. So we have to use Ka is equal to H plus concentration multiplied by that propanoate concentration divided by the propanoic acid concentration. This situation is not a chemical reaction. We're told that we are dissolving this mass of sodium propanoate, so there's no reaction occurring, and we just need to find out what that mass is. So if we look at what we know, we know the pH of the solution, and so that means that we can work out the hydrogen ion concentration from that. That should really always be the first thing that you do if you're given a pH. Turn that into a hydrogen ion concentration because since pH is negative log of H plus concentration, 10 to the minus pH is equal to the H plus concentration. So 10 to the minus 4.5 gives us a hydrogen ion concentration of 3.16 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per decimeter cubed. We've been told the propanoic acid concentration, we've been told the Ka, and we've now got the H plus concentration. So we can plug those numbers in, then rearrange them and calculate our propanoate ion concentration. Or you could rearrange the expression first and then calculate the propanoate ion concentration. Either way, you'll get a mark for the rearrangement of that expression, either with the numbers or without. When we do that, we end up with a propanoate concentration of 0 0.1068 moles per decimeter cubed. Now that's a concentration though, not a mass or a moles. So if we look at where we're going with this question, we need to work out a mass of sodium propanoate. To work out a mass, you need to know the MR and you need to know the moles of that thing. And so that means that we need to work out the MR next, that's the easy part, sodium propanoate. We add up all of those relative atomic mass values from that formula and we get an MR of 96. So we now know the MR but we don't know the moles. Moles of solution is equal to concentration multiplied by volume. And so we've just calculated our concentration of propanoate ions in mark number three. So we need to multiply it by the volume, which was 500 cm cubed. But since we're using moles per decimeter cubed, we need to turn that 500 cm cubed into decimeters cubed by dividing by 1,000. And so that becomes 0.5 dm cubed. And so the moles of sodium propanoate becomes concentration 0.1068 multiplied by volume 0.5, which gets us a moles of 0.0534 for the sodium propanoate. And now that since the MR is 96 grams per mole, the mass of sodium propanoate, that's our final mark, is going to be 0.0534 moles multiplied by 96, which gets us 5.13 grams. And so this is the mass of sodium propanoate that needed to be put into the propanoic acid to get us a buffer solution with a pH of 4.50. Now for this question there would probably be a range of acceptable masses. It wouldn't be huge, maybe something between 5.09 and 5.14 because the rounding is more likely to have made the answer bigger than smaller, so 5.13 is what we would get on our calculator, but there'd be that acceptable range. Okay, that's the end of this question. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.